I started drinking because all of my friends got married. After that, they had kids and their life changed and mine didn't and I was lonely. And I had actually put myself in a lonely position by, by sitting in the darkness and getting lost in alcohol. My name is Jennifer Gross and I have lived in Maryland all my life. We're in the Hope Chest right now. We're across the street from the well. They've given me the position here in the Hope Chest as Hope Chest Coordinator. Um, this is the, the newest thing that we've got going on here. Um, it's a little storefront that we have access to now and people can come in here and get things from toiletries to clothes and shoes, baby items. It's a great place. I grew up not far from here um, in Glen Burnie to an amazing family. Um, I got to grow up in a house with my mom and my grandparents and an aunt and uncle. Um, I'm an only child, so of course I was spoiled. I, I lived in a house with rules and structure because my family knew that that's what I needed. Um, but I didn't realize it, so I decided that I wanted to try something new. And in college, um, I started with the, you know, with the party and, and the drinking. As I got older, it got, I got more and more involved in that lifestyle and in that scene until eventually um, it nearly took me out. In July of last year, I found myself in the hospital. Because I had essentially drink away my liver. As I was lying in the hospital, I had a team of doctors who were working around the clock to try to figure out what was actually going on with me. Um, they tested me for anything that they could um, and came up with nothing. And as I was lying in the bed, I just realized that no matter what, they didn't have to tell me what was making me ill. God told me. And he told me that I needed to change. And that evening, I did what you're not supposed to do, was barter with them, but I said, thinking that he could not do it because I was too far gone. I said, Father, if you could just get me out of this, I promise that I will go forth and tell everyone of your greatness. And he healed me and he held me to it. It took about eight months for me to get back on my feet. And when I say back on my feet, I was so weak that I had to be pushed around in a wheelchair. And then I said, I think I, think I kind of know what I'm gonna do from here on out. So, I became, I went to school to become a health and life coach, which I love. Changed my habits, of course, quit drinking cold turkey and decided that I was going to start brand new. Maybe about a month ago, um, I got a little tap on my shoulder from God and said, and he said, you know, hey Jen, remember that time uh, you almost died and you didn't? I didn't let that happen. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need you to step up your game. Um, and there's something that I'd, I'd like you to do at the church at Severn Run. I'd like you to, to step out um, and encourage other people to step out. Uh, there's a lot of shame in addiction. There's a lot of shame and the enemy lives in shame and secret. And I don't want to be anywhere where he is because it's cold and it's dark and it's lonely there. And that's not a place that I ever want to be. And I, I pray that there are others that, that feel the same way. Um, that they will step out of that shame and out of that darkness and we can all come together and just celebrate just a, a redeeming God, a healing God. The enemy wants you to think that you are too far gone, that this is just the life that you've created and the life that you're going to have to live and you've created this misery. You've done it to yourself and now you're stuck. But he's a liar, he's a liar. And you don't have to live like this. My, my biggest fear in, in becoming sober was 
I, I didn't think that I was going to be funny anymore. Everyone knew that I was the funny person, and I thought nobody's going to want to be around me anymore. And am I funny? Absolutely. I'm still funny, but not to the same audience. It's a little different now, and that is why it is so important to, to connect with other people. Because I was so lonely. We are not meant to do life alone. And it goes back to being in that darkness whether it's, it's addiction or anything that you're going through, if you're just a, a true homebody, an introvert, it's so easy to get into that dark place. And you're in it before you know it. And then you don't know what to do. You don't know who to turn to because you've isolated yourself. You can't always do it on your own. You need other people around you. You need rock star friends. You need people who are gonna hold you accountable who are going to pray for you, who are going to encourage you, who are going to admonish you if, you if they know that you're doing the wrong thing. I think because I was in isolation for so long, I didn't, I, it was almost like I lost the ability to, to make friends. It was, it had become foreign to me. I mean, what do you do? You just walk up to somebody and say, hi, I'm Jennifer, do you want to be my friend? I said, that's, that's what worked in fourth grade, but I don't know if it's going to work when I'm 37 years old, but I'll give it a try. And the Church at Severn Run, that was the, if I was going to try it and fail miserably, that was the place to do it. That's the place to do it, where I was, no matter what, I was accepted and loved on and welcomed, and people were happy to see me, and I didn't have to walk in shame anymore.